Let's talk about Halo. Now, Halo 3 just came out on PC, which means I can play it without having to use one of these. But the problem is, I spent all my money on Warhammer and flashlights. I've only got $12, so I'm not going to be able to afford a uh, $250 Logitech setup, for example. Instead, I went to my local Five Below before the lockdown and picked up these two. The Use Gaming Central Color Changing LED Gaming Mouse for $5 and the completely brandless Multicolor LED Gaming Keyboard uh, for $7. Let's see how they stack up. If you watched my uh, Chromebit Gaming video, you'll know I already used these to make myself motion sick in Stadia. Uh, and considering I can play VR flight simulators with no problem, that is impressive. So I've already verified that they both work and are actually functional. Uh, let's go through some of the features advertised on the box. Starting with the mouse, we've got, well, it sure is wired, and if I plug it in, <laughs> Sure is wired, and it sure is LED. Let's turn the lighting off. Oh yeah, you can see that. I guess it does change color very, very slowly. And uh, the flashing is actually the sensor LED that you can see through, because the whole thing is extremely light and brittle. We have no extra buttons whatsoever. It's just these two, scroll wheel and center. And in fact, ooh. You can make the buttons press if you push back here. That's not a good sign. 1200 DPI, I guess I could test that, but I don't really want to. Ergonomic design, ah, uh, yeah, I'll agree it's ergonomic. Um, I'm not a fan of all these random plastic edges, like the uh, uh, fake <laughs> hex bolt or uh, hex screw thingies over here. Um, that's not particularly great. <laughs> Made in China as expected. Sorry, that's a fire truck going by, you can still hear it. We just flip the box over. Let's read the blurb. If you're a gamer, you need a high performance gaming mouse. Take your game to the next level with a U-use color changing LED gaming mouse. Quick and easy to use, no need to install extra drivers or software, simply plug and play. <laughs> it's funny that that is a selling point when most of the selling points of uh, expensive gaming mice are, ooh look, it comes with Razer software, ooh look, it comes with IQ software, etc, etc. We've got <laughs> appropriate weight for comfortable grip. It weighs about nothing. It weighs, it probably weighs like, I don't know, 25 grams? <laughs> it's nothing. The cable weighs more than it. Uh, and thank goodness it's compatible with Windows 8, 10, 7, Vista, XP, Mac, as a trademark OS, but not Mac OS, uh, Linux, or latest operating system, whatever that means. And of course we've got just... Oh wow, look! It pulls out Linus Torvalds in the, uh, in the text on the bottom. And apparently this company is from New York. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, I, t I believe that. Alright, throw that in the trash and move on to the gaming keyboard. Now this doesn't appear to have a brand on it. Mm, distributed by 1616 Holdings Inc. I guess that counts as a brand. 701 Market Street for Suite 200 Philadelphia. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, okay, no, 1616 Holdings Inc. is not affiliated with Apple Inc. Yeah, I wonder, I was wondering about that. Um, let's plug this one in and check the LEDs out. Ugh. Because I do have a problem with the LEDs on this on this mouse, uh, though most people probably won't. So it's now plugged in. Turn the lights off. The way you turn the LEDs on with this keyboard is hitting scroll lock, and there are LEDs. You can see them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> um, the problem is, if you use scroll lock. 
like if you're an Excel user and you genuinely use scroll lock, there is no way of turning the LEDs on without toggling scroll lock. So if you're actually like, I don't know how to put this, if you use scroll lock you can't use this keyboard's LEDs. Unless I guess you turn it on, unplug it, plug it back in and, and do it that way. But yeah, this is this is very, very let's let's do a little bit of a Oh see the flex on that. And feel the plastic. This this is tech by the way, this is textured to look like aluminium, but it's not. It's plastic, as you can tell by the fact I can twist and bend it trivially easily. Um Oh, it may, may have permanently disfigured that. That's fine. <laughs> as far as layout goes, it's honestly not that bad. I could learn to touch type on this. Let's unplug it before I cause my computer to explode. Um, what a strange length. 53.1 inches. Why not just say 53? Or, or... Huh, weird. Oh, this one's got its $7, yeah. All right, let's go on to actually using the thing. As far as typing goes, I'm not the world's greatest typist, but I could learn to touch type on this keyboard. The main issue is that the build quality, let me, I'll stop typing. The build quality is such that when you do type, the the noise is, is overwhelming. Uh, it's not a satisfying noise like a mechanical keyboard, like this. It's, it sounds like you're in an old car and you go over a speed bump too fast and every dash, every panel in the interior goes. You know what I mean? Uh, it's definitely a membrane because it's squishy and blech and the whole thing. There's another complaint. I like a keyboard to be set up like that, uh, but there are no legs on the back. And the middle doesn't have the same support as the edges, so when you press down on a key in the middle, the whole thing flexes. So when you hit the space bar, everything else just rattles and it's it's not a good, it's not a good time. Honestly, the mouse is fine. It weighs absolutely nothing. Uh, DPI is a little low for what I like, so you're moving it a lot more. Uh, but yeah, it hasn't missed a click or done anything weird. Uh, scroll wheel is reliable. The scroll wheel being reliable is actually something that's not taken for granted, because uh, there's a set of Microsoft mice and keyboard where the, <laughs> the scroll wheel will stop registering scrolls after a while but this one seems pretty solid um it's it just weighs nothing and i'm i actually like a heavy mouse uh i'm not i'm not one of those people who are like give me the lightest mouse ever so i actually currently use a corsair harpoon because uh, it's wireless and this is too light even for me i much prefer the the, the heavier mice but Comparing the two, I mean, obviously this one's 50 bucks and this one's five, so you can't really compare them, but it's just... Mm, it's like picking up... It's like picking up a can that you thought had drink. It's still in it, but there's no, there's no liquid, and you pick it up and go, whoa, that's what using this mouse feels like. Oh, that's interesting. If you, if you hit the table with it, the right mouse button hits. Well, I don't know if that's a design flaw or by design, but there we go. Now I've taken them out of the boxes, verified that they do in fact work, and the mouse issue on Stadia was not the mouse's fault, it was Stadia's fault. I'm going to try to play Halo. Now this may be a problem, because as I tested, the rollover is four keys. So <laughs> that means it will only register the first four keys that you hit, um, and normally for a a game, I prefer like six at an absolute minimum. I think my keyboard at work, it's a cheaper Corsair keyboard, uh, supports six. Um, and I really don't know if it's going to be a problem in a first person shooter where I'm, where I might be pressing 
W, A, space bar, and F all at the same time. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Oh, the other thing is, I haven't played Halo 3 multiplayer since like 2009, so my skills are going to be pretty rusty. So do excuse me if I don't get a single kill and die constantly. All right, I've got my, I've got my my setup with my <laughs> my toys and a webcam there. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've played Halo, <laughs> or I should say Halo Three. If I get just like a couple of kills, I'm gonna be happy. Yeah, you killed Q Q Q Q. Cute. Oh, and that was the developer. The developer thing as well. Oh, and he was behind me, of course. And, and I'm dead. <laughs> oh, finally a second kill, Jesus. Well, that was nice and clean. Oh boy, that was a good shot, QQQ. Dang it. <laughs> well, I wasn't last. I was second last. So there we go. I played three or four games, though I only recorded the first one. Um, and the last one, I was I got five or six kills, and it was pretty good, and we won uh, on Sandtrap, which is, I think, my favorite Halo 3 map. Would I recommend these peripherals? Obviously not. They're so cheap and so nasty, and they're 12 bucks, right? Logitech sells their uh, MK120 for 15 or $14 on Amazon. Go buy that. That Logitech set will last way longer, is way better in every way. Think of these like those, you know, the plasticky Mad Cat style game controllers? <laughs> Where they look, they look cool initially, uh, but then you realize that maybe just the controller that came with the game system is better than them even without all the flashy. Uh, flashy lighting and transparent plastic. Think of these like that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.